G'day everyone. Uh, I wanted to come back on and show you a very typical practice piece. Um, I took a little bit of a break. I had glandular fever. <laughs> Not that it matters, but um, I also started up at uni. So, you know, I'm pretty busy uh, in saying that. Uh, this particular piece I started in January. Um, I started off just practicing with the palette pastels. And these are the Jane Davenport palette pastels from the Making Faces collection. And I just wanted to try them out. I didn't really know how to use them. And I mean, I still don't really know what I'm doing. I have the general gist of it. Like when you, you sort of know that, you know, if you've got a powdery substance, especially if you were a woman and you, or a person who uses makeup, um, you generally get the gist of how an eyeshadow would work. So it's essentially the same thing. Um, I actually know a few people who use makeup um, in their art supplies as an art supply. And when I sat down to practice with the palette pastels, I really didn't understand what I was doing so much because I'm not, I can't really wear makeup. Um, just sort of... It, my skin doesn't like it. I don't know what's in it that's causing it. And I really can't afford to go to a dermatologist to figure it out. Um, but yeah, so I was just going in head first, no idea what I was really doing. And this is my first true attempt. Like the one where I swore to myself, I wasn't going to use anything else. I was just going to use the palette pastels. Um, I did use some of the squid ink as sort of a base just to go through one of the Jane stencils. Um, and this is one of Jane's Mermalicious brushes, which I'm using to put the pastel on and it creates a very soft blended effect, like super soft. You can really, really blend it and it just, you can't really tell that there's a line there. Um, this is over the top of gesso as well. This is a pre, uh, pre gesso page, and I would strongly recommend using the palette pastels over a gesso surface if you don't have access to, um, say, a more. You know, there are papers that are designed for pastels, so if you don't have something like that, a gessoed surface, brilliant. Um, and as I was working, I was just really interested to see how it was working and how the colors blended together and how the brush worked compared to the sponge how carpal tunnel I got with the sponge because that's a whole lot of smooshing and swirling and dabbing and lordy I didn't know what I was doing but I got there I I found them to be very not powdery powdery as in you know you don't make up <laughs> beauty gurus like to talk about um fallout and when it comes to palette pastels there will be a little bit of fallout so especially when you use a brush it's just that extra pigment that's sitting on the page and it didn't it didn't transfer it didn't put color where I didn't want it or anything to that effect and I was able to use um, an eraser and just rub it off if it ever got into the, you know in a spot I didn't want it um, you can't really see it but these are the shimmery ones and oh they are so pretty so so pretty but you can't really see them I'm afraid um, but yeah and the colors are lighter on the paper than they look in this video which is strange to me because normally it's the other way around like colors will appear lighter um, on a video than they do on the paper and I don't think it's a fault of the pigment I think what that is is because I was applying oh so very thin coats I'm barely picking up any product <laughs> product oh, I'm a booty guru um picking up any of the pigment and it was just is so soft and light and yeah there's really not much to talk about the palette pastels because I just don't know what I'm doing and I haven't really had a chance to play with them since this page 
And now I'm using Squid Ink with a makeup sponge. Such a beauty guru. Um, with a makeup sponge to put these flowers down. And I wanted to try lots of different colours on these flowers. Um, with the palette pastels. Because I was wanting to try a large surface area. So that was the face. And then the, the flowers are much smaller. And sort of can give me a little bit of... Um, sort of an option to create different like shading and highlights and stuff um i didn't quite utilize that to the fullest potential um but that's me um and i just was working i sort of got lost in the moment i had you know i had some tv show playing i don't know which one it was probably oh january probably charmed just sitting there watching old 90s tv show reruns oh yeah, it was a good experience. The there's certainly a different medium, one something I've never tried before. And I know a lot of people talk about the pan pastels, and you know you've got your other kinds of pastels. You've got chalk pastels and cream pastels and oil pastels and gel pastels. Um, so many different kinds of pastel out there, and I was interested not just because it's Jane, and I do love Jane. Um, but because it was a medium I'd never tried before. I tried, I think it was a chalk pastel a couple of years ago when I was doing my Bachelors of Visual Arts and I hated them. I really did. They were, they felt horrible in my fingers. I like the texture of them, but these, there's just, there's nothing to them. Like they have sort of a, a soft like when the page was finished, if I run my fingertips over the top, I will pick up pigment depending on how hard I put my finger on. But it feels very soft and smooth. Really, really, really lovely. Um, compared to a chalk pastel, these, uh, I know they're technically the same thing. Technically, but it just doesn't, it's just a completely different experience. And I cannot stress how much I really like them, even though I don't know what I'm doing, even though I'm really new to all of this, um, it's, it's fun. It really is fun. Now, this was February now that I've done, um, all the stamping, uh, all the stenciling. I went back when I was no longer sick and just sort of, did this very slowly. I think this was a good, the flowers took me, gosh, I think this was three hours, maybe three hours. Um, these little shimmery pastels with the little fish tail, um, mermaid tail embossed into the pigments. Um, super shimmery, super pretty too. Um, but they don't have color names. Um, the palette pastels, the bigger ones, the ones that look like eyeshadow palettes all have um, names and things and I'll I won't link to the actual names because I cannot for the life of me remember which ones I used because this was two months ago um, but yeah I'm actually recording this in the middle of the night because my internet is down so I can't study not that I actually was you know studying but we're gonna pretend I was <laughs> um, yeah so I'm just mixing colors trying to find something that works and Jane brought out um, some blending sponges specifically to work with these, uh, with the palette pastels. Um, and I don't have them. I want them, but I don't have them. Um, so I went to Kmart, uh, which is, gosh, I, I wouldn't know the American equivalent. I think they have a Kmart over there, but they were like three bucks to buy a bunch of, um, cheap little makeup sponges and they work really really well get such soft blends but oh my hand was hurting so much because you really you sort of squishing to get a better sort of a more controlled blend and a more to put the pigment exactly where you want it to go with such a large surface area you sort of have to squish them and you're squishing them and you're pushing down onto the paper because you do need to burnish the pastel in that little bit so it doesn't move or transfer um, I've never had a problem with transferring uh, for these palettes, uh, for these palette pastels, but I, and I, and I did not use a fixative 
just FYI, no fixative. Um, yeah, so I also found these super tiny, tiny little makeup sponges, like little baby ones. Oh, and they work much better for the, uh, um, for a little bit, for a smaller surface area, I suppose. Um, but they, they do hurt my hands. Maybe that's just because I was out of practice because I don't do, I don't use a makeup sponge every day because I don't wear makeup. <laughs> um, yeah, so the little batten blender that's like the my eyeshadow applicator that I'm using, that's one of Jane's, her actual batten blenders. And they do work well, but oh, definitely not for a larger area. So as you can see, some of the palette, some of the pastel is very streaky. Like it doesn't look like a flat um, layer of color. That is not a pastel's fault. That is my fault. As you can see, I'm going back over the top <laughs> with a makeup sponge, which blends it out a little bit better. Um, and I also didn't, after I've put all the palette pastel down, I haven't done anything more to this particular piece. I probably could do a little bit more. Um, I just don't know what to do. That was the thing. I just, this was just play. This was just practice. This was just learning a new medium. And it's very pretty, like such pretty, pretty colors. Um, and I did learn a lot. I really did. But I sort of just gave up in the end. I was sore. I was tired. I was like, yeah, this art piece really took it out of me. And that... When a, a piece really takes it out of me, makes me sore, makes me tired, I know I've had a good time because I have back problems as most 30 year olds with two kids do and I get tired very easily and it's just when you're sitting at my specific desk um, and leaning over and, you know, doing a lot of layering and a lot of blending, you get saw sitting on a chair for a good three six hours and yes you're supposed to get up and move but I don't because I get really into the zone and I did with this piece too definitely just very much a I'm just gonna sit here do my thing while my husband was partner was at somewhere I can't remember I don't care where he goes um, and my kids were school and kinder and stuff. So I had the house to myself and I just really wanted to practice with the pastels. And this piece was inspired a little bit by Carrie, who is just an amazing artist. She really knows how to use Jane's products. And, oh, she did this, this set of four ladies um, four ladies in her book, in her journal, and they were gorgeous. And she used the palette pastels and it was just this softest, prettiest, oh, amazing, so good. And I wanted to try and replicate that soft blend that she that she had. And I got tips from her, make sure the surface is gessoed, you know, and take your time. And I did. And yeah it was fun I'm gonna it's gonna it was fun a lot of fun I'll probably do it again I will almost certainly use the palette pastels again I don't know at what point that will happen or if it'll be this year <laughs> it'll it'll definitely be this year um I just have to fit some art at some point in during uni which is very difficult for me um and then after that I'll be able to sit down and just have a play yeah I wish I knew more to be honest about the palette pastels I wish I could really go into more detail and more depth but this was my first true proper attempt I'd had a little bit of a dabble before which I did in a past video I think it was during um uh that December thing that I did the Christmas prompt list thing that I did for 31 days oh that was that that was hard but um yeah I I really just wanted to have a play a play and a practice and I learned a lot and I'm definitely gonna have to keep going with them 
just to sort of figure out different ways to layer them, different ways to use them, what colors do work best with other colors, how not to make mud. I didn't, I don't think I made mud with the pastels, but I know I made mud with a little bit of the uh, squid ink, but that's okay. You know, these things happen. It's, it's my journal. It's really not, you know, these aren't pieces that I'm going to um, sell or put on display or anything like that. They're just, this was practice, just everyday ordinary practice. And I can't stress enough how fun they were. And I know that the blends aren't perfect and I know that the colour choices, you know, could have been better and how some colours got lost, lost in each other. I can see that. <laughs> and I can see the strokiness. But, you know, for a first true proper practice attempt, I thought I did pretty well. Not going to lie. I do like this piece. It's very, very pretty. I love the colours. They're so, oh, they're so vibrant. Wow sort of they're very they're they're vibrant in if you lay them on really thickly and really strongly they're super vibrant and super pigmented but if you use the brush for example the mermalicious brush um super soft and just really sort of it doesn't dull the color it just sort of um, lightens it's like if you add water to watercolor it dilutes it a little bit and yeah here's a close-up you can see all of the strickiness. Um, yeah, it was a fun, interesting, not altogether terrifying experience. It was very difficult to figure out what to do. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching and please follow me on Instagram if you really liked it. Thank you. Bye.